The Rockies have figured out a formula for putting together a team that can win at Coors Field. We welcome in Jim Callis of MLBPipeline.com for more on how this team was built. And Jim, we got to start with a couple of MVP candidates who were both drafted by the Rockies. Well, I guess the Rockies' secret is just to score big with your second-round picks because Charlie Black, a round pick in 2008, Nolan Arenado, a second-round pick in 2009. And as you mentioned, those guys are both MVP candidates. Uh, you know, Trevor Story is another big part of their lineup. He was a supplemental first-round pick in 2011. And, you know, the, you know, the theory has been for years that the Rockies are probably going to have to develop their own pitching, which is not easy to do in Coors Field, just because it was going to be hard to attract free agent pitchers there after the Mike Hampton and Danny Nagel debacles. And that's exactly what they've done. And they've got three first-round picks in their rotation. John Gray looks like he's going to be the ace that they've always tried to develop, and they may finally have one in him. He was a first-round pick in 2013, number three overall. Tyler Anderson has come back from injuries, had a really nice year. He was a first-rounder in 2011. And then Kyle Freeland has had a a big rookie year. He was a first-round pick, number eight overall, in 2014. There's no real blockbuster trades when you look at this roster, but certainly some important trades along the way. Yeah, they they made a a series of moves that, uh, you know, I think – you know, coming into the year, they, they made three moves in particular that stand out for me that all worked out better than they initially would have hoped, I think. Uh, you, you've got Tyler Chatwood, who, who's had a nice year in their rotation. He came over from the Angels in November 2011 in a deal for Chris Iannetta um, and has played a nice role in, in Colorado. D.G. LeMay, who's won a batting title, made a couple of all-star teams. He came over in a, in a four-player trade with the Cubs. Before the 2016 season, they made a they sent Corey Dickerson to the Rays, as well as prospect Kevin Padilla, and they got Herman Marquez, who, who's been another young rookie pitcher who's had a nice year in the rotation, and Jake McGee to help fill up their bullpen. That's worked out. And then this year, uh, when they were contending, uh, they they kind of they, they went for it without sacrificing their future, Tim. They got Jonathan LaCroix and Pat Neshek from the from the Rangers and, and from the Phillies without you know giving up mid level prospects. And both those guys have played key roles down the stretch for Colorado. And they haven't done a lot on the free agent market, although they kind of tried to in the offseason, Jim. One move didn't really pay off, and then they again had a gamble that did. You're, you're right, Tim. I mean, Ian Desmond was supposed to be their big free agent move. Five years, $70 million. They gave up a first-round pick to get him, and he hasn't had anywhere near the year that the Rockies hoped. But on the flip side of that, the gamble that really paid off was getting Greg Holland, who has locked down the closer role just like he used to for the World Series champion Royals a couple years ago. Coming back from Tommy John surgery, kind of uncertain as to what you're going to get out of them. So they signed him to an incentive-laden deal with only really $6 million in guarantees this year and a $1 million buyout next year. He's pitched so well, he's triggered $9 million in incentives. He'll have a $15 million option with another $6 million in incentives next year. So that's really paid off. Their other free agent moves were small. Mark Reynolds has been their primary first baseman for most of the year. They also signed Mike Dunn, Alexei Amarista, as well as free agents. They've played kind of complementary roles.